Okay. You yeah. gotta love technology, man. You gotta love it. You gotta love cat technology. Like George Costanza says, can't you can't stop science. You can't stop science. No way, no how. You can't beat science. Ah. Welcome everyone to Progressive Discussions. This happens to be the the official All Hallows Eve uh, Day of the Dead countdown uh -huh. 2017. And uh, we only have one unseasonably warm day. It's not today. Tomorrow is supposed to be 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And after that, it's straight through typical seasonable October weather, my favorite month. Okay, seven lucky bells for this week's progressive discussions. Everything we discuss politically on our show is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch soaking that conch energy. Yes, King Neptune, we never run out of material. If you are a true progressive warrior, <clears throat> you never run out of material. Especially with, with, uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know if he, he has uh, partial dementia, or if he's just downright insane, uh, uh, if, if he's stupid, or all three of them, or egomaniacal, of course. I mean, um, uh, corrupt. He lives in his own world. Corruption, perhaps. He's a Republican. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, the Trump administration, yeah. Yeah, they're like, uh, yeah, they, well, they don't believe in progress. It's like the old popes of uh, the, during the Middle Ages. They, they're anti-science, anti-progress. But they're pro-money. Oh. Yeah, where's me gold? Like, yeah, I know, the Leprechaun movies. Yeah, that were, they were funny. Leprechaun in the Hood was a bit ridiculous. Leprechaun in Outer Space was also dumb. Yeah. But, you know, they just kept on making more... You know, it's worse than the Rocky sequels, actually. Hey, there's another one coming up, Creed. No, that's been out. No, it's coming up Wait, again. Wait, this is Apollo's kid, right? I don't know no more about it. It's got to be Apollo. It's got to be Apollo. Apollo's kid. I think Sylvester up. Stallone is directing. All right, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Of that's course, all he's I know. Of course, he's directing. <laughs> you know, I don't think he might not even be in it. You know, but. Oh, God. I believe it's called Creed. Well, he could be in it to help train the kid. Well, that's possible. It's the least he can do. But I think Paulie's still alive. Hey, Paulie! Uh, Bert Young. He's gone. He's dead? No. Burgess Meredith? No, oh. Bert, Paulie, uh, Adrian's oh, the brother. Oh, guy. The guy that, that was a little, uh, he hit the bottle a little too often. Hey, Paulie, know. Paulie, uh, don't, does it t doesn't have a telephone. Hey, Paulie, he used to uh, open the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah No, yeah. I know about Burgess. Anyway, Nick. that's that's all I know. Nick? Oh, Burgess, Burgess, Burgess Creed. Meredith, I mean, that's a real actor. That's a real versatile actor, Burgess Meredith. Versatile. God, God rest his soul. Anyway, the last of the Dos Equis <laughs> and Bar... I have made the decision that there is no Mexican beer strong enough for James P. Madonna. I'm going to have to go back to the Yinling Porter or the Zwick, uh Polish Porter and Stouts and uh, uh, Red Irish Ales and oh my God. All, the, you know, all the craft beers, all the American craft beers, which happen to be more potent than, than most of the European beers and ales. With the exception of um, uh, Newcastle Brown Ale, which isn't bad, but still weak. I'm sorry, Europe. I'm sorry, Asia. I'm sorry, Mexico. But I, I mean, I'm not a flag waver <clears throat> by any stretch of the imagination. But American craft beers are number one when it comes to full-bodied, rich, robust flavor. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's not a bad beer. Do Dos Equis Ambar is not bad. Let me have, let me wet my whistle. Wet my beak. You know, I was watching, um, I always watch many science documentaries on a science channel and other channels. <clears throat> Isn't it interesting that 
Not that, not necessarily, not necessarily that birds are the closest descendants of dinosaurs, but birds hatch from eggs, and they're warm-blooded. That's what amazes me. <coughs> they hatch from eggs, like a primitive creature that is generally cold-blooded. But, you know, they're warm-blooded. Anyway, uh, I salute my near, dear, very close uh, friend, Nata uh, Natalia from San Diego, <clears throat> California, is visiting me uh -huh. for six days uh, this Monday. Wow. Yes. I will have her for six days. Mm. Very happy about it. Um, and uh, from the last time I spoke to her, so was she. Reuniting. Okay, I want to start off by um, bashing Newark Liberty Airport. Oh boy. Uh, this is what happens. <clears throat> All right, I'm having a, a professional driver, limo drivers that are you know, reasonably priced ones that myself and my sister and bro uh, brother-in-law have been using for years. They're very reliable, very nice guys, mm -hmm. uh, and reasonable. And they, you know, they'll, they'll pick you up in a new black Lincoln with black leather seats and tinted out windows. You know, you, you, it's not a cheap-ass yellow taxi cab. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm doing this is because Newark Liberty Airport, not, not departure, but arrival, is worse than a zoo during feeding time. It is an absolute insane asylum. You, They allow, now granted, if you're just a regular pedestrian, I mean a regular person, civilian, that's driving there, mm -hmm. that has to take a thousand and one fucking exits just to get there, off, the, off I-95 South, the New Jersey Turnpike, okay. They won't let you, like, you can't, if you don't see the person that you're picking up, you can't stop. you got to go around again and around again until you see the person. Mm -hmm. But these fucking, these commercial um, drivers, I don't know if they have appointments to pick people up or not, but they're all blowing their horn at the same time, trying to fight their way in to get close to the curb. They're parked this way diagonally. Uh, double park. It's the diagonal part that that got me upset. They're all like like competing with each other to get customers. Oh, it's okay for these commercial drivers that have no bona fide appointments to do that, right? But it's mm -hmm. not not okay for regular people to do that. Um, I guess you know. I guess anything goes under under a Republican administration when it comes to. Uh, the private sector, they're all blowing their friggin' horns left and right. It's 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 a nerve-wracking, insane asylum. And I did not see this at all at um, San Diego Airport. It was very calm and laid back there, very uh, um, um, peaceful, very uh, well-mannered, very um, it wasn't hectic. Um, it, it, there was no chaos, but in Newark there was chaos. Now I hear the same thing sort of happens at JFK Airport in New York City. Why are they allowed to do this <clears throat> if they don't have bona fide appointments? Like why is every Tom, Dick and Harry allowed to just shove their commercial vehicles in there and why are they blowing the horns? It's like they're saying Pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. First of all, if you don't have an appointment, blowing the horns like that, I thought it was called noise pollution. I thought there was a law about that, even well, in New York is. City. You know, there remember is. the old days in the 70s when you couldn't even see the New York City skyline because the pollution was so bad and you went and, and everything was beep, 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 beep. All these asshole. Uh, uh, taxi cab drivers blowing their fucking horns, you know, it's noise pollution. So this is why I have a driver picking her up and taking her there, because I'm telling you, 
I got no tolerance for this bullshit. Well, that's you know, what are the police uh, really picking up over there? Well, if they're all blowing a horn left and right, right there's a really good chance that they and don't have they don't have appointments. And they're not supposed to stop there. They, they're, no, they are stopped. They're stopping. But they're not supposed to. They're parking diagonally, uh -huh. trying to shove yeah. the, f the grill of their vehicle against, their against the curb, double park, diagonally park, blowing a horn, which means <clears throat> they do not have booked appointments to pick somebody up, which means they are coming in yeah. and trying to fight with other drivers to get people. Uh, they're to, only supposed to drop you off. Well, that's same thing with the, the that's departure. The same thing with the pickup. Now arrival, only commercial vehicles that have <coughs> booked appointments should be allowed to go against the curb, not diagonally, but against the curb, and everyone else who's not a professional driver, <coughs> they come by normally. They look and see if the person's there. If the person's there, they stop. They put the uh, suitcase in the car and they go on their merry way. If the person's not there, they drive around a second time or a third time. Usually people know how to time it. You know, like if you get out, you get off the plane and you're going towards, I think what they call a carousel, where the, where the luggage comes out of the plane and it goes around and around and around. You see your luggage, you grab it. Now you're right there. There's the exit. Okay, so you try to time it. But you don't, like, <clears throat> fight for customers blowing your friggin' horn left and right, causing chaos. No, so, shame on you. Chisels Hall of Shame, Newark Liberty Airport. I don't know who is in charge of Newark Liberty Airport that allows such chaos. I really don't. Right. There's not supposed to be any parking at all. Pick up and delivery. No parking. That's it. You see the person, you pick them up, you go. You don't see the person, or, drop or you off. drop them off, you say bon voyage, bon voyage. Yeah. and they go inside. They Well, they have to check their luggage outside. Then, if not, you go around again. Yeah. Maybe you call them on your phone, hey, I'm here. Are you there? You go around, pick, until you pick them up. Right. You, don't ha you don't loiter with your vehicle and blow the horn, beep, 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 beep. You no. don't do that. Okay, now, my second, the second half, which is really, there's nothing else. The second half of my little monologue <coughs> is, uh, do not, under any circumstances, and I just watched the YouTube video, coming from legitimate news media, do not, under any circumstances, <laughs> do not, under any circumstances, download on the new Facebook Messenger app because once you do that the old big nose Zionist motherfucker Mark Zuckerberg or maybe the powers that be that pull his puppet strings they can spy and they will spy on everything you do with your smartphone even if it's private texting, conversations, email, your camera, everything, everything you do is will be spied upon and you're not told that this is going to happen. It's, it's against your uh, authorization or your will, so to speak. Huh. All right. That's why I give the middle finger every time I'm in front of a, a monitor of any kind. Because if you're spying on me, go fuck yourself. Fascism. Yes, yes. You're not told you're being spied upon. This would really, you know, I should put this on Jesse Ventura's page because he would really be upset. He's really against being spied upon uh, uh, without his authorization. Uh, so is, I don't think uh, Ron, Dr. Ron Paul is uh, too fond of that either. Um, but anyway... Um, yeah, don't download on it. It's amazing how they they withhold information from the people and they just do things. Now, what app is that again? I just said the Facebook Messenger app. Okay. It's like a blue. The logo is like a blue arrow of some kind. 
Facebook message. Facebook. Yeah, you know, Big Nose, Zionist, Mark Zuckerberg. Facebook. Messenger. App. When app, I guess, means for phones. Application. For anything. Did you down an app? download an app on a laptop or a tablet? Not or the a, same. It's, a, it's different. No, you, they can, you the download. The phone is touch. You download software on, on a regular uh, yeah. desk, desktop. But the ones for the phone are touch. Touch, uh, touch screen apps. That's correct. Well, you might as well say the same thing about a tablet. It's touch screen. Some right? tablets are and some t uh, Windows 10 are. Well, you don't need to have touch. No, I kind of kind of like the old-fashioned uh, buttons. I have one. I, I have uh, you know <laughs> a, a mousey. Yeah. Um, you know. By the way, sometimes my infrared, uh, uh, ball-free, castrated mouse malfunctions a little bit, and I got uh -huh. I got to shake it up. I got to smack it around a little bit to get it to work. <laughs> Maybe it's age, I don't know. Or maybe it, there's debris on it. Maybe I need to clean it. You know, there's a little red light underneath it. Yeah. Infra infrared. Pick mine up. I'm, I'm sure there's one there, too. Well, good thing, you know, I forgot to check the stopwatch. Good thing I... Good thing 16 I, minutes. Good thing I bet my neck over that way. So that's it. You know, um... Oh, by the way, on, on my, on my uh, Android, which I'm not happy about... Uh, sometimes I get forced downloads Ooh. of software that I do not authorize to download. They just do it. And there's no button that says cancel, by the way. There's no cancel button. Are they from uh, Windows? Or the uh, operating system? The operating system that by default comes with the, um, with the Android. I know, but update. UMX that they... Uh, no, they weren't even updates. They were just, you know, uh, applications. Just apps. You're supposed to have a cancel button if somebody tries to force a download on you. It's really nice that you have the option of saying no. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be a nice thing. Yeah. You know, but uh, nevertheless, tis the season, so let us. Uh, sink our teeth into these readings. Uh, maybe we can bang out one or two before we have to pause after the, uh, the 29 minute um, countdown. Don't ask me why it's 29 minutes and 50 seconds. Ask the Sony Corporation. If it was up to me, <coughs> Unless I find I find out differently, I rather just film straight through. Go ahead. Millions of Social Security recipients and other retirees are gonna will get, are gonna get fucked. Get a two percent increase in benefits next year. Oh wow, a whopping two percent. Don't spend it all in one place. The largest <laughs> increase since twenty twelve. It should be more than 2%. It's well, long, no kidding. It, no. It's long overdue. Though it comes to only $25 a month. Big fucking deal. That's for like the your, average beneficiary. It's like your uncle uh, giving you two bucks as a kid. Hey, kid, go buy yourself something. Yeah, like Andy Griffin and Opie. Give him a nickel, you know, for where, emptying out the waste paper bags. Oh, the fu <laughs> Speaking of kids getting money, uh -huh. the funniest thing was the Dennis the Menace episode. Where you know Mr. Wilson worked in a bank, and 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 Mr. Wilson gave him a lecture about saving you money, and and, yeah. and, and Dennis the Menace brings all, brings to the bank uh, like um, a handful of change and wants to put it in a bank account, and he's and he's call, he comes every day to see if his money has grown. grown. <laughs> every day he's bothering Mr. Wilson. Holy shit! You know, the I just thought that was. Real funny. It was cute, but it was. I thought it was funny. Well, I got news for you. If he put it in today, it wouldn't be growing. No, uh, the interest sucks. That's right. Now, maybe with the popularity of the federal credit unions and some savings and loans, uh, yeah, they do offer better rates. Federal credit unions. Yeah. And there's there's a couple commercials on TV now. Yeah. 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 
The cost of living adjustments, or SCOLA, affects benefits for more than 70 million United States recipients, including Social Security recipients, disabled, veterans, and federal retirees. That's about one in five Americans. The Social Security Administration announced the COLA on Friday. By law, <coughs> the COLA is based on a broad measure of consumer prices generated by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Advocates for seniors claim the inflation index does not accurately capture rising prices faced by seniors, especially for health care. It doesn't make your life any easier. It's really made it tight, said Barbara Bogart, who retired from a home health care company. You have to be so careful to make it each month. Bogart, 75 years old, lives near Indianapolis. Okay. Said she gets less than $1,000 a month from Social Security, her only source of income. They're pro they probably wouldn't give her uh, food stamps uh, with that much. But no, New Jersey, forget it. New Jersey, uh, if you don't, if you pay room and board and you don't pay for utilities, they chop your food stamps down to nothing. Yeah. But um, but but Chris Christie, who passed that law recently, sure is not missing any meals, obviously. I have all the normal costs that people have. I have groceries, gas for my car. There you go. I have to be cautious. Some conservatives argue that the inflation index is too generous. What? Well, yeah. they, don't, they don't want you to have anything. They want you to be a slave or die. Because when prices go up, people change their buying habits and buy cheaper alternatives. Too gener generous? What about all the free uh, billions in tax money that the uh, that they give away to their rich buddies every year? Okay, isn't that being too generous, Republican Party? You. Yeah. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Consumer prices went up only slightly in the past year, despite a recent spike in gasoline prices after a series of hurricanes slowed oil production in the Gulf Coast, eh, said Max Gulker, senior research fellow at the American Institute for Economic Research. Doesn't anybody just tell off these conservatives when they blurt out idiotic statements? Aren't there, isn't there anyone with balls in, in any form of American media? For the most part, there was a decline in energy prices for a lot of the year. But at the end of the year, we saw that uptick in gas from the hurricanes. The what? average monthly Social Security payment is... Uptick? You mean uptick? $1,258. Big fucking deal. Or about 15000 a year. Big fucking deal. Compare that to all the... The perks that uh, these uh, do-nothing congressmen get. Congress enacted automatic annual increases for Social Security in 1975. Presidents often get blamed when increases are small or zero. But Donald Trump <coughs> has no power to boost the increase unless he persuades Congress to change the law. In 2009, Barack Obama persuaded Congress to approve a one-time payment of $250 to Social Security recipients as part of an economic stimulus package. Over the past eight years, the annual COLA has averaged just above 1%. In the previous decade, it averaged 3%. <coughs> Multiple years of small or no COLA reduces the income of the retirees for the rest of their lives, said Mary Johnson, 
of the Senior Citizens League. Okay. Don't spend it all in one place, suckers. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is November 2018. Make sure everyone makes it their business to vote. Because, because if you don't vote, don't complain. <coughs> and uh, democratic socialism is great. Capitalism sucks. It is proven with statistics and scientific fact to suck. Hey. Because uh, Northern Europe is just doing fine and dandy for many decades. Yeah. Right. Overall. Yeah. And they can afford health insurance, and they don't have the uh, infant mortality rate that America has. Listen. Their life is better. If you're on the take, let's say you're filthy rich, Ooh. and you're, you don't have enough money, and you're a politician, and you're on the take. Then, you know, it's easy to turn around and say to Bernie Sanders, hey, you're giving a, you want to give away ponies. Ah. You want to give away ponies. What about the ponies that the filthy, that the top 2% of the wealthiest get? It's never, 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 never look. Ponies, at. they get Clydesdales. Hey. They, get, they get Arabian horses. They get thoroughbred race horses. They, they get the whole friggin' uh, 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 of ranch. Magilla. They get yeah. the whole ranch. Yeah. Heaven forbid the little schmuck gets a pony. There you go. Or a, or a squooey, wascoey, widow gray wabbit. <laughs> Heaven forbid. America's weight problem isn't getting any better. Overall, obesity figures stayed about the same. About 40% of adults and 18.5% of children are obese. Well, it's an addiction to refined carbohydrates. As simple as that. And, and, and with the American food industry, with the USDA and FDA, it, they're all in cahoots. It's an addiction. So it's like, it's like a drug dealer. Those numbers are a slight increase from the last report. But the difference is so small that it could have occurred by chance. You better put your knuckle over where you're reading. Worrisome is to experts is the rate for children and teenagers, which had hovered around 17% for a decade. The two to five age group had the biggest rise. The years ahead will show whether that's a statistical blip or marks the start of a real trend. The bad news is that numbers did not go down. In recent years, state and national health officials have focused on obesity in kids, who were the target of the national Let's Move campaign launched by former First Lady Michelle Obama. The report released on Friday covers 2015, 2015 and 2016. Oh, by the way, a working First Lady. The new figures are from a manual, annual government survey with about 5,000 participants. Obesity means not merely overweight, but seriously overweight, as determined by a calculation called the body mass index. Mm -hmm. More details from the report. The 40% rate for adults is statistically about the same as the nearly 38% in 2013 and 14. Obesity rate for the age group is 41% for men and 45% for women, between 40 and 50. Oh, you done? Yep. Good. We have to pause. We'll be right back. How about that? Good goobly goo, man. Okay. Uh, okay. We're back. All right, con continue. Yo. Oh, that would help, right? Yes. Continue. <coughs> Thank you for reminding As we rid our landscape of Confederate heroes, 
we are already embarked on a campaign to dethrone another tainted historical figure, Christopher Ocumbo. Oh, that scumbag. He was the one who told his shipmates, gee, these, uh, these native people are very friendly and generous. They would make excellent servants for us. Nice guy. Recently in New York, two statues of him have been vandalized. No, they, I think Columbus is now uh, becoming a Native uh, American or Indigenous Peoples Day. As we observed, Columbus Day on Monday. I salute you. A national holiday. Indigenous people. That for most of us is just an excuse to take a three-day weekend. Some uh -huh. cities have used the occasion to officially rename it Indigenous Peoples Day. And I salute you again. And why not have a shorter work week as long as you don't take a cut in pay? Americans are overworked. Not enough leisure time. At That's least good. Europeans have leisure time. In atonement for the many wrongs inflicted upon Native Americans. Hey, I, I see nothing wrong with taking a bill, I mean bill meaning money, put, put a picture of, take one of those slave owning, plantation slave owners off, put Chief Sitting Bull, who I think is a hero, I believe is a hero, puts Chief Sitting Bull on there, take another bill, put Harriet Tubman on that, so now you have a woman and a woman of color who did a hell of a lot uh, fighting slavery, and I, so what? Do it. Hey, put the buffalo back on the nickel. Do it. The bison, bison is a symbol of America. That's right. There are no buffalo. They're bison. 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 Thank you. Thank you. They're a symbol of, uh, of America. Put the Indian head back on. Well, they should discontinue pennies, but now at least put, listen, take a nickel. Put the bison on that. Take a quarter. Put another Native American on that or something. George Washington's on the dollar. How, how many more, bill, you know, how many more places do you want to put George Washington's mug? You know what I mean? Jelly bean? Go ahead. Perhaps this is also an opportunity to ask ourselves how the removal or destruction of statues that few people ever notice benefits the African Americans and Native Americans who are disproportionately poor, sick, and lacking in opportunity. Progressives well, delight in dealing out symbols, well, pressuring only... high school sports teams to drop mascots well, that are deemed offensive. Well, that's, that's petty. How do you take a professional sports team that perhaps could be like 80 years old and all of a sudden dump the mask, dump the logo off the helmet, you know, or maybe change the name. It's, it's, it's petty. It's really. Look, those, those fans <laughs> that buy tickets to go see the game, they're not thinking racist thoughts. They're thinking about their home team winning the game. You know, and so it, it can go, it can get out of hand. You know, like the Cleveland Indians. I yeah. like that smiling uh, Indian head with the feather. He's got a big smile with teeth and everything. It's cute. Give me a break. Uh, these symbolic changes are an easy way <coughs> to compensate people for centuries of mistreatment. And they might make us feel momentarily virtuous. When a plague comes down or a street sign is changed, but the exhilaration of race expiation can degenerate into ordinary vandalism. Why don't you just give um, these people equal rights, and 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 if they're poor, uh, uh, take care for the poor and tax the rich and do the right thing. That's the action is is more important. As is the case 
of the recently beheaded statue of the Confederate soldier in Columbus, Ohio. Now these people are still fighting the Civil War. Ohio? Oh, not in Ohio. No, Ohio is, is, is Yankee. What the hell is it doing up there in the first place? Yeah, what is it doing in Ohio? <laughs> you know what? Slaves used to cross, uh, what's that river separating Kentucky from Ohio? The Ohio River. Ohio River, yes. Slaves uh, used to, they had a hard time doing it, but uh, that was one of the escape routes. Once you, once you go across the Ohio River into Ohio, they can't come after you and uh, bring you back to the plantation. You were free. It's time to ask ourselves whether we have gone too far with this iconoclasm and accomplished too little. One paradoxical result of this effort to exorcise the demons of the past could oh, yeah. be only to anger people who may have some vague tie to these symbols but probably didn't spend a lot of time or emotion venerating them until someone came along and branded them as racist. You just end racism and you take care of the poor. That's the best thing you can do for indigenous people and for, and for black people, people of color. That's simple as that. And of course, you don't, you don't, you don't behave in a racist manner to, to, to immigrants of color either, like the Trump administration is doing. Perhaps their resistance to change might simply have come from the fact that they just liked their town square the way it was. People will fiercely defend even something that they never especially valued if you threaten to take it away. Five decades ago, <coughs> Daniel Patrick Monaghan caught hell for suggesting that the issue of race in America had become so contentious that it might benefit from what he referred to as benign neglect. Perhaps he meant that there may be a limit to how much force feeding of racial awareness people can absorb before they begin to resent it. When I listen to the endless racial consciousness raising on national news media, I wonder how many people like me just tune out the moral indoctrination as it leaves us feeling powerless in the face of monumental wrongs that seem never to be addressed. The record of white America is full of sins for which we could atone. Yeah. I just wanted to see it. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking. But at some point, remorse mutates into self flagellation. Self flagellation. One thing is sure the effort to obliterate every trace of the ignoble chapters of our history will do little for those who suffer the most, except fleeting satisfaction that will inevitably give away to the enormity of the struggle that they must wage every day. As for those Americans who have seen those symbols removed, we should not expect deeper racial sensitivity. I wonder if that uh, will happen like with the, the conservatives down in Texas where they edit and censor the uh, 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 textbooks. Yeah, are, are, uh, yeah. also the, the Southern conservatives, uh, they love to have them them extra voter IDs too. Oh, yeah. So, 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 so the Poe folk do, don't bother to go vote. There you go, yeah. And therefore the, uh, the Democrats <coughs> don't get elected. That's it. You know, oh, by the way, people, if you're wondering about these two <coughs> characters. These two characters are kind of part of old man Leonard Nimoy, Spock, 
This is, of course, the Gorn, the captain of the Gorn ship. And this is the, um, I don't know what it is, but it's a monster from the old Star Trek series. I'm sure if you're a Star Trek fan, you'd recognize it. It's got a fin on his back and a tail and a one horn on top of the head. You know. The snow monster. Yeah. Was I, I, there snow in that episode? I I'm forgot sure. the day of the, 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 the couple from the day of the dead. I forgot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to definitely remember next week. Next Sunday. That, that'll be our special uh, mm -hmm. Halloween Day of the Dead 2017 show, I think. No, next week? No. Next Sunday is uh, the 27th. 27, 27. No, it's the 23, 22, 21. Next Saturday or next Sunday? Is Sunday is 21, 20 is Saturday. Really? Yeah. 16, the 16th is Monday. Today 16th, is the, 17th. Today you is the 14th. Right. Yesterday was the you 13th. You might be right. You might be right. Friday the 13th. Yeah, and it definitely was and felt like a Friday the 13th for me. Oh. Yeah, it did. How are we doing on time? All right, let's go. Plenty of time. Yes. But we do have to recharge after the second video. Boney Maroney. I have to recharge too. Yeah, we should we should actually go to lunch. Even if it's if it's a little before three. Yeah. Alright, go ahead. When it comes to toxic foods for pets, oh gosh. Most people know the common offenders such as chocolate and onions. Don't give chocolate to a dog. Onions? Onions. Are toxic to many animals? Yeah. Man, they're so medicinal to, to humans. The Allium family. Alleyoop. But several newer toxic foods <coughs> have, have surfaced that many pet owners don't know about yet. Many people give fresh fruit to their pets. Uh, is the pet an iguana? If the pet's not, I saw, a, not a vegan, you don't give fresh fruit to the pet. I saw swimming iguanas today. I was looking at a uh, very cute baby blue iguanas. They're, they're um, hybrids. There are red iguanas, blue iguanas, as well as green iguanas. I believe green they were in the Galapagos. But when they were all out sunning on the beach in the rocks... Yeah. They all look like statues. Are you talking <laughs> about the? You talking about the charcoal gray yeah, or, or yeah, black? Yeah. You're talking about the marine iguanas that hold their breath and graze on uh, uh, yeah. seaweed and algae. Yeah, underneath. Yeah. No, those are marine iguanas. They, they snort the the salt out. Well, all lizards do that. They and expel. They, they perspire through their schnozzola. And they're very slow. They don't. In, they don't sweat in fighting each other. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 lizards that are um, are communal, that are not solitary, like an African chameleon, they're all solitary. They they don't want to know. They don't uh -huh. even even a mother doesn't want to know its babies once uh -huh. they're hatched. They're, Goodbye, get away from me, or else. But uh, communal lizards like bearded dragons, iguanas, and they uh, have hierarchies. They have an alpha male and an yeah. alpha female. For real, you know. Many people give fresh fruits to their pets as a treat. And while most fruits are considered safe for dogs and cats, yeah. the one major exception is grapes and raisins. Well, naturally, uh, raisins being dehydrated grapes. A toxin in the skin of grapes and raisins can cause serious damage to the kidneys. Now, do you see why... It's important to talk about pet health as, as well as holistic human health because I bet a lot of people are unaware of this. I bet a lot of people are unaware of chocolate being toxic to dogs. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm learning now about grapes. You know, I mean, listen, if you have a carnivorous animal, you feed it properly. If you give it top-of-the-line food, like if you have a cat, let's say, and you give it, let's say, blue buffalo or a nova, or Paul Newman's brand, and you know, you give it a good, a good top of the line company. I'm telling you, you don't even have to give them vitamin supplements. You don't have to give them supplements 
at all. That's how good this food is, you know. And um, and 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 as far as exotic pets go, black soldier fly larvae are naturally very high in calcium. No need for supplements. Go ahead. Not all pets become immediately ill from grapes and raisins, but the small number that do can have serious health issues. The other more recent toxicity is to sugar-free gums that contain the sweetener xylitol. Yeah, what an X. Xylitol. This it, sugar it's even sound, substitute it's even sound synthetic. is completely harmless to humans. Well, I don't know about that. But can be potentially <coughs> very dangerous in dogs and cats. I wonder if stevia is safe to give pets. Because I use natural stevia. Small amounts of the toxin can cause a life-threatening drop in blood sugar. This is, this is valuable news, you jabronis out there. This is a valuable consumer advocate news coming from progressive discussions. And a large amount can significantly damage the liver. Wow. The blood sugar can change dramatically in as little as 30 minutes after ingestion. This toxic reaction usually requires admission to the hospital for treatment and serial blood sugar and liver function monitoring. There are dozens of other common household toxins that can affect our four-legged family members, mm -hmm. such as household cleaners, paint, glue, houseplants, insecticides, Rodentiocides and of course human medication. Uh, uh, a pagan Christmas is around the corner, and I just want to say that the plant called poinsettia is very toxic to pets, to animals. Very toxic. Probably even toxic to humans if a child eats eats a, one of the leaves. And of course human medications. I said that. If there is ever a question as to whether a substance is toxic, there are two great resources that all pet owners should take advantage of. One is the ASPCA website. The other is the ASPCA Animal Poison Control Number 1888 Four, four, three, five. This hotline is staffed by veterinarians and their database for medications, plants, and just about everything that's ingestible is exhaustive and thorough. There is a charge for the call. Charge? But the information might just save your pet's life. Charge my ass. Charge. I'll give you a charge. I'll give you my shillelagh right across the skull. Um, put that on its side. Okay. All right. We got time for one more. Or maybe. Well, we'll see. Yeah, one more. Play it by you. <coughs> the. National Rifle Association. Yeah, I, they confuse me quite often. Said on Sunday that it opposes any legislation to ban the use of bump stocks. Oh, really? So why does a regular Joe six pack need that need to have a bump stock or an auto automatic military uh, firearm? Ah, uh, gee, I wonder on semi-automatic weapons, even as it has said some regulation might be necessary. Yeah, sure. Some regulation. That means nothing. 
on uh, Sunday morning talk shows, the gun lobbying group said the Trump administration, not Congress, should take action on the devices. Under the Obama administration, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms right. permitted the sale of the devices in 2010. Really? Somebody got paid off. But <laughs> stocks have taken center stage in the gun control debate after the Las Vegas shooter apparently used them to convert semi-automatic rifles into fully automatic weapons, mimicking machine guns. Hey, can can the family of uh, victims sue the NRA also? Uh, no, unfortunately. Hmm. Just as they cannot sue the maker of the gun. No, you, no. That's why you need regulations and laws. Yeah. No, you don't go after the maker of the gun. Unless, you know, but, you know to unless a car is recalled that has a defect. You know. To Republicans, the Second Amendment is much of greater value than the First Amendment. Yeah, but when the Second Amendment was created, people had muskets. Yes, they, they had did. a little lead ball inside of a musket, flint, a flintlock. That's with true. A black powder flintlock. And obviously... One, one bullet. I mean, one one ball. A lot of them left their musket at their armory. I don't have a problem with people having a musket in the house. Uh -huh. You never know when you might need it. And a lot of these people hunted. Don't forget, they lived on, you know, their own land. Yeah. They only, whether they had a log cabin or a family-owned farm. You know, they, a lot of them hunted. The, Appa the, Appalach the Appalachian people hunt all the time. Yeah. You know, so that's, uh, the musket's not a problem. It's it's this automatic weapons that's the problem. <laughs> because they're only made for one thing. To mow they're not made for bringing down a deer. No. They're not made for bringing down an elephant. They're made for bringing down a human being. As many as possible. At one time. Yeah. At one clip. Yeah. Yeah. That can shoot a hundred at a time. Right. The clip. Yeah. Okay, let's... Progress. Bump stocks have taken center stage in the gun control debate after the Las Vegas shooter apparently used them to convert semi-automatic rifles into fully automatic weapons. It's illegal to convert a semi-automatic to a fully automatic. <coughs> the ATF ought to look at this, do its job, draw a bright line. Oh, it is illegal? But, it, but it's obviously permissible. I mean, it's happening. If you can sell it, then how can you stop anybody from using it illegally? It's illegal, but you can sell it. Oh, gee, that makes a lot of sense. There you go. NRA Executive Vice President Wayne LaPierre Wayne Newton. said, allowing Congress to take action risk turning the bill into some kind of Christmas tree. To advance other gun control measures that could affect both semi-automatic and automatic weapons. If you fuzz the line, fuzz they're them. all at risk. And we're not going to let that happen, he said. But, Senator Dianne Feinstein, a California oh, Democrat, that old bag said Congress needs to close the loophole. There's too many loopholes in general, period. <laughs> but try to get a Republican-controlled Congress to close loopholes. Well, we're going to see a nice uh, picture of that with Don, Donald Trump's new uh, taxes. Okay, we're going to see all those the loopholes. Oh, the closed. new taxes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I hope you people enjoy the the rather comical banner of uh, a jack-o'-lantern carved to look exactly like Donald Trump. Really? It's, it says, uh, I pro whatever, I promise to make Halloween great again, something like that. Yeah, but the jack-o'-lantern is, is done by an artisan, an artisan. It looks just like Trump. The hair, the, the snarly, you know, when, when Trump raises his voice and shouts the face. You know. 
Dianne Feinstein introduced a two-page bill last week that would ban bump stocks, trigger cranks, or similar devices within six months, with an exception for government or military use. Regulations aren't going to do it. We need a law. I, it can't be changed by another president, right? Now, we're seeing one president change actions <coughs> of a president that came before him. And that would happen in this area. And I hope that Americans will step up and say, enough is enough. Congress, do something. Yeah, right. Do something. They, they didn't do anything for eight years Obama was in office. She said she has 38 co-sponsors on in such a bill. But all are Democrats. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, every time things are, are positive, things are done. You always have have to have all these victims before something's done. You know what I mean? It's like uh. she said. House Speaker Paul Ryan said last week that bump stocks are something we need to look into. Oh, really? To look into? It's, it's not up for debate. Regular folks should not have automatic weapons. He needs to look into it. But conservatives in his conference are already saying they are opposed to the legislation. i got to vote those, those motherfuckers out in November 2018. I'm telling you. Representative Steve Scalise, himself wounded by gunfire at a June 14 congressional baseball practice, told NBC's Meet the Press. He also opposes any congressional action on the devices. Uh, what a stupid motherfucker. Because he's getting his palm greased. It has right. to be. Minority leader Nancy Pelosi already said she wants it to be a slippery slope. She doesn't want to stop at bump stocks. They right. want to go out and limit the rights of gun owners. Well, for the type of gun. For okay. the type of gun, yes. You know, not guns, period. I would love to own a, a, a Winchester or a Henry rifle, to be honest with you. Are you okay or are you croaking on me? No. Look like you're killing over. I'm fine. Okay. The White House hasn't said where it comes down on the issue. Okay. Good. You finished it. Finished. Now we're going to take our lunch break. You will be joined by How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses and Promo. And then we'll be back with the balance of the show. Feel free to hit the pause button. I can't get my foot in there, brother. Feel free to hit the pause button and learn. Hit the pause button and learn.
Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censor pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. All right, we're back, we're back, back from lunch. <coughs> I hope you learned something with how to defeat a conservative uh, Bible verses. Anyway, I want to apologize to Svenguli or Count Dracula or whatever, he, that I, I forgot to take him out. In, in the first two segments of progressive discussions. You see him up here? He's in the coffin and his lid is right next to him. Do you see him? Okay. All right. The second Dos Equis Ambar beer. Okay, continue. Donald Trump on Saturday again hinted at military action against Korea, North Korea. Well, uh, uh, Kim Jong is always uh, uh, threatening the, the United States, isn't he? He's trying. He always threatens. His he, sister is is, uh, is being groomed for political uh, power. Well, yeah, because he killed most of his family. Oh, he had some relatives bumped yeah. off? He, he I, even bumps off relatives? Absolutely. <coughs> what a fat bastard. Uh, keeping alive tensions with the isolated nation and distancing himself further from his top aides who favor diplomacy. Only one thing will work. Her Jimmy Carr is going to visit and meet with Kim. To, to, to. They need to. Uh, He's a great negotiator. If they're going to do that, they need to. Uh, let that uh, basketball player go again. Oh, Dennis Rodman. Rodman. He yeah. likes Rodman. He likes Rodman, exactly. You said he likes Rodman? Rikes, uh, uh, I don't know. He likes Rodman. I don't know what connection, I don't know what chemistry they have, but you're, you're right. Yeah. <coughs> Only one thing will work in dealing with nuclear armed at North Korea. Rodman and uh, Jimmy Carter <laughs> should, should he, go there at, at the same time. Presidents and their administrations have been talking to North Korea for 25 years. Agreements made and massive amounts of money paid, <coughs> he said, and it was not clear what money he meant. Yeah, the North Korean people never get help. They live in poverty. The money doesn't uh, trickle down. 
there. Okay? No, with with military uh, dictatorships that are uh, a fascist, a part of fascism, uh, it trickle down doesn't apply. Just like with the Republicans, the trickle down never works. That approach he wrote in a following up follow up post hasn't worked. Agreements were violated before the ink was dry, making fools of U.S. negotiators. Sorry, but only one thing will work. It was the second consecutive weekend in which Trump has taken to Twitter <coughs> with belligerent messages that contradict his top military and diplomatic advisors. So North Korea is not willing to uh, compromise, is what you're trying to say. Obviously not, <coughs> because uh, presidents in the past have, uh, have given them a, 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 a paid them a ransom to stop what they were doing. I'm sure it was Clinton started that shit. But he hasn't stopped. He just kept going. Uh, let me tell you something, brother. Bulldog, uh, General Bulldog Maddox, in, uh, or Maddox, whatever the hell his name is, in uh, uh, the United Nations, uh, they have it all planned out. Uh, uh, Kim is just going to get obliterated if he doesn't watch his step. Uh, in every way, shape, and form. Last weekend, Trump wrote, as if to his Secretary of State, Rex Dillerson, saying that he was wasting his time. Oh, they're supposed to have an IQ test uh, to get uh, they're supposed to debate. They're calling each other out to listen to Trump. By trying to talk to the government of North Korea, dictator Kim Jong-un, to find a peaceful solution to what has become a potential nuclear standoff. The president's postings a week earlier just the day after Tillerson in China said the United States had established direct contacts with North Korea to probe its willingness to negotiate. We were widely seen as a humiliation of Tillerson and not the first. Tillerson sub subsequently denied that he has he has threatened to resign. The dispute between Trump and Tillerson over North Korea, among other issues, has severely strained relations within the cabinet. North Korea has conducted itself a dozen nuclear tests and Kim has threatened U.S. allies like Japan as well as U.S. Territory. Doesn't Japan have uh, no. a military yet? Well, they do now. They, but they need. They need to. <laughs> well, yeah, but the United <coughs> States and Britain, just as it did with Germany, forbade them from having military after World War Two. Yeah. What about? Doesn't Merkel have? Uh, uh, now full, they do. Full-blown full military in Germany? Now they do. Because I, I, I believe that uh, Germany and Japan have higher technology than probably most of the world. Well, but they always do. Well, the German army now is, is growing and army. is sticking its nose into a lot of things around the world. Army? I'm talking about the... And we are teaching them the at... Alamogordo uh, Air Force Base in, I think it's Arizona, isn't it? Germany don't, Ger Deutschland and Japan doesn't need no freaking United States to train them. Well, they're and there. And they don't need to buy American freaking planes. They got, believe me, they got high technology. They got, they got, they got enough technology to have their own space program and space stations, well, and you can, you, you, they did, don't need U.S. We did, help. We did not want them getting into, you know, starting World War Three. Well, I don't. So I wouldn't worry but about. But now we're allowing them. Well, because you have stuff you to have, do. Uh, 
you know, you got uh, uh, Putin sending the military to the to the European to the NATO border, right? by Poland, and not by Poland, I mean by Poland. And then you have uh, Japan that has to deal with uh, North Korea, firing missiles over their airspace. I mean, we need them. We need them to be more self-reliant. Well, the problem is that there are some who say that the, the Germans are not working with the United States, but against the United States. Well, Merkel is not crazy about Donald for Trump. War, for World War Three again. I'm telling you right now. They have figured out that they, <coughs> that they, it was difficult to get the, by military action. So they came up with the European Union I'm telling you right to now. conquer Europe. I'm telling you right now, NATO and the United Nations, I'm willing to bet everything I have that they are not fond of Donald Trump. And Merkel is well, no, they've is, never been Merkel fond. is no fan of, of the Trump. They've never been fond of many of our American presidents because we didn't we do not allow the United Nations to do what it is supposed to do. Well in the old days, when there was a flare up somewhere around the world, it was the United Nations who went in there to quell it. Well now you have occupation. By American bases, yeah, right. U.S. bases. Right. You have poppies. Remember, remember the Wizard of Oz. Poppies. You have poppy fields with the Taliban being uh, opium drug lords. Yeah. In Afghanistan, how long has the U.S. been in Afghanistan now? Ah, uh, sixteen years. Thirteen, fourteen years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Poppies. Voice technology is amazing. Uh. Excuse me. You can ask your phone a question. Yeah, I try. Doesn't understand my English. Siri. I try speaking slowly and is using. Is that do you? Does that app cost some money or? You know, you... I like to take my phone and smash it to smithereens <laughs> with my shillelagh. I speak slowly. The king's English. Do you understand me, phone? And it keeps on getting words wrong. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, Even Cortana fucks up on Windows 10. I talk slow. The King's English. What do you want from me, man? And uh, even a book on Uber. Within a right setup, you can verbally lock the doors in your house, dim the lights, and change the thermostat. I think the programmers are, have a dim light in their brain came up with these programs. Virtual assistants are handy, but they're always listening as more manufacturers and developers jump onto the audio tracking bandwagon. You might wonder how much your devices are recording and what happens to the audio files they gather. You think it's like when Captain Kirk used to speak to his computer at the on the bridge? That understand every friggin' word he said? No, it's not like that yet. And that was Major, Major uh, Barrett, uh, Gene Roddenberry's wife, who spoke. <laughs> really? The computer, yes. Oh, you had to give her a job. Oh, sure. Nepotism. <laughs> Nepotism. Worst of all, our Cheap apps labor is what it is. They're on a budget. That use <coughs> ultrasonic data to profile you. You don't hear the tone. But your device does. Some regular apps are designed to spy and report back recordings. Oh, really? She Creeped what, out? What were we talking about at the beginning of the show about spying? Many people are. Lots of consumers don't trust their virtual assistants and wonder how to switch them off. If you're worried about the privacy risks of your smartphones always on microphone, here are the tips to turn it off. Sometimes it's just like accidentally just engages, and but it never it never understands me. I mean, you know, I don't use slang at all. 
when you put the Facebook app on your phone, <laughs> it requests access to your microphone. Requests, some of them request access to all your contacts. I don't want pe I don't want them bugging all my uh, all the people I know, so they can come back and complain and say, "Hey, what's the big idea?" Why? Like LinkedIn, the most boring professional profile I've ever seen in my life. Facebook needs to record your voice when you shoot live video. But some people are wary of this. Yeah. Does the app only record you when you're on camera? Which is often bad quality video, incidentally. Or... When you go live on Facebook. Is Facebook listening through your microphone? Uh, here, let me do the proboscis, the eagle beak, Mark Zuckerberg. Let me tell you something. There's, there's nothing that the, the eagle beak, the people, the tribe that have eagle beaks would not do to make a fast buck. Look at the guy in Hollywood with the pedophile scandal. What's his name? Epstein. Weinstein. Weinstein. Harvey. <coughs> Harvey Weinstein. The Facebook denies these claims, and there is no solid evidence to support this fear. But you can sever the tie between the app and your microphone. Right. Many people have no use for this access anyway. So there's nothing to lose by switching it off. If you are an iPhone user, which uh, I'm very, I am very impressed with his performance, by the way. Go to settings, Facebook, <coughs> settings again. Slide the microphone switch to the left, so it turns from green to white. That turns it off. I try to explain to somebody uh, about how to work, how to alter settings. You gotta be real stupid ass not to understand simple settings, right? When you click on your settings, it's self explanatory. Yeah, if they work. Sometimes you click on something and it doesn't work like it's supposed to. Well, you know, usually you, there should be a drop down uh, a menu. You go to settings. There'll be an arrow, and you, uh -huh. and you make uh, like, for instance, when you when you choose uh, the microphone that you want to use. Yes. If you want to do, let's say, a video chat, it'll ask you your camera. You choose your camera. You'll see it. You'll see the name of the camera. Yes. You choose the microphone. You want the microphone from the from the uh, computer, from the computer jack, or do you want to use the microphone on the webcam? It gives you that option. Yeah, it's self-explanatory. But there are people that are that, they're that <laughs> stupid. Alternatively, you can go to Settings, Privacy, Microphone, look for Facebook, and do the same. you got to have the plug-in, like the same with Google, Google Hangouts, Google Talk. You have to download on the plugins to make them work. Note that you can toggle the microphone on and off for other apps too. If you are an Android user. Android. Um, unfortunately, I am an Android user. Well then, so, try I, settings. So I smashed it to smithereens with this. Settings. Yeah. Applications. Application Manager. Look for Facebook, permissions, turn off the mic. The only thing with Facebook um, Live is, um, does it pre-record uh, on, your, on, your, on your profile? Like in other words, when you go live, when, when, when you decide that your video is over, do you have a, a pre-recorded, do you have, does the, is the video appear in your album, or is it like gone? Gone. And what the fuck? Why'd you save it? 
Well, you should have this. You should be able to like. Say, what if it's a good one? You should be able to save it. Save it. You should be able to, be able to yeah. save it. Yes. If you do decide to shoot video later on, just return to those settings and reestablish <coughs> a connection with your mic. You can always switch it off again when you're done. Yeah. Well, your internet connection also plays a big role in the quality of your video. If you have a, a, a slow connection on a Wi-Fi, you, you, you're going to get horrible video and audio. Is Amazon Echo always listening? Alexa. Hey, you want to listen to me? Go fuck yourself. Alexa. Is activated when it detects one of its wake up words, which are Alexa, Amazon, here's a wake computer, up. here's a wake up word for, echo. for you. It's called Blackthorn Shillelagh from Ireland. Here's a wake up word for you. You'll know the device is ready for a command when the outer ring at the top glows blue. But until that happens, Alexa always has open ears, waiting to be addressed. Oh, really? And does Alexa understand the King's English when spoken slowly? Amazon keeps an audio recording on its servers of every voice command you have issued to her. Oh, you want to keep track of me? Here, here, I got something for you. I have an itch in the middle of my forehead. According to Amazon, there is also a fraction of a second of audio before the wake word that is stored along with each recording. That fraction of a second gets saved along with your main command, and the recording ends after the command has been processed. I was surprised when I checked my um, Amazon Echo recording. In one recording, I was explaining why I wasn't taking a deal <coughs> on a commercial building that I had up for sale. <coughs> you should take a moment and check your recordings. Uh, yes. Like Echo, Siri is always attentive, even when you've forgotten your iPhone can hear you. What about a voice command that actually works, that actually understands the English language? With iOS 8, Apple introduced the, hey Siri, wake up phrase. So you can summon Siri without even touching your phone. So Siri is the name of the Apple voice command. How is it with a C, Siri, or an S? S. Okay. S-I-R-I. -I. It's probably the name of one, uh, uh, that guy, the CEO's wife or something. It's usually some egomaniacal reason why they pick names. Apple says that this is processed locally on the device and that it does not start recording your voice or, or daughter until it hears hey siri is this almost over once your request is recorded it uploads the audio file to apple's servers for processing but that might still give you the willies and luckily, you don't have to disable Siri <coughs> completely. Navigate to your iOS devices settings. General. Siri. Then toggle. Allow. Hey Siri. To. Off. Google. Once more voice activated tech. And the company recently released its latest masterpiece, OK Google. This serves as Google's new wake phrase. 
calling the attention of Google Assistant on Google Home speakers, Android smartphones, and the Chrome browser. So the Chrome browser can speak to you too. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you have to download on the uh, certain a app, right? You know, certain, certain software. Every time you use OK Google or use another voice control function, your request is recorded. You know, I tried the Chrome browser uh, in the search, in the search window, and it, um, it, it, it doesn't hear my words verbatim. It sucks. Sounds like all of them do. Yeah. Yeah, and I speak slowly like Tarzan would speak. Dude, no Jane. slang. I know you slang. I use the King's English. Luckily, Google introduced a new My Account tool that lets you access your recordings and delete them if you want. You can also tell Google to stop recording your voice for good. On Android, go to Settings, Google, Search, Now, Voice, and Turn, OK Google, Detection, Off. I got a better idea. Create voice command program that works. It actually works. That understands the English language as it is in the dictionary. Finally, there is Cortana. Cortana is a retard. I, I have done the same thing. With the voice activated system from Microsoft. That's right. Cortana can answer questions, do searches, set appointments, and open applications. The wake phrase is, hey Cortana! Oh boy. Open Cortana on your Windows computer. Select the notebook icon in the right column. Click on settings. Then toggle, hey Cortana! To off. Oh, you mean to get to dummy her up? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've done that. I'm not sure. Dummy her up. Brace yourself. Because ultrasonic technology is hard to fathom. Some programmers create apps that can track high frequency sounds. Humans can't hear them, but certain receivers can. Your smartphone can spy on you using waves you don't even know are there. There you go. Marketers can use the information they collect to tailor their advertisements to you. The apps are looking for beacons, tiny auditory clues hmm. that suggest where you shop and what you like to buy. Marketers then pair your browser cookies to track a single user's behavior across multiple devices. In fact, hundreds of Android apps are already using ultrasonic sounds to track user behavior. Okay. These behaviors include physical location and TV viewing habits. In response, Google announced that Android apps that, are, that use ultrasonic tracking would be banned or suspended Developers will have to prove they adhere to Google Play Store's updated privacy policy. The new policies require developers to disclose an app's ultrasonic features and ask a user's permission before accessing a gadget's microphone.
So if you're worried about ultrasonic tracking, check the permissions before you install an Android app. Oh God, thank God that's over. But it was informative for those that care. You might want to take it home? No. No, 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 because I've gotten super frustrated and aggravated that they were giving me, they were, they were acknowledging totally different words than what I was giving them. Totally different words. Well, Even though I pronounced them properly and slowly. <coughs> yeah, no, we're, we don't have time for We anything. don't have time. No, we don't. So we're going to say... <clears throat> so long. Have a safe weekend and upcoming week. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Sunday. Not Saturday, because I will be occupied. Domingo, Sunday. We'll see you. Now, wait a second. Next Sunday is what? I don't know. I can't see you Saturday. 15, 16, 17, 18, Natalia 19, will be 20, 21, 22. Natalia's gonna be uh, oh, twenty one. Natalia's gonna be departing uh, in the um, oh okay in, in the early afternoon because she has All to, right, she has to be at the airport. I'm thinking it had something to do with uh, Halloween. No, no, okay. no, Halloweeny. We got no. time. We got time. Oh, okay, so it's, it's because no. she's gonna be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's gonna be departing. She has to be at the airport. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know, what is it, one or two hours uh, earlier because of security purposes, you know. Okay. Alright. We're doing good.